Hello, in this video what I want to do is create a kaleidoscope effect in P5JS. And you all know what a kaleidoscope looks like, it's this kind of repeated pattern um, that's created with a little tube that has mirrors inside it. And there's a good explanation of how that works I found on this Science Buddies page, and there's quite a good diagram down here at the bottom. Basically, in a mechanical um, kaleidoscope, you have the setup where there's a sort of a tube and three triangles reflecting in that tube. And then at the end of the tube, there's um, some little beads or an image there, and that gets reflected again and again by the uh, mirrors in order to create the kaleidoscope effect. So what I'm going to do basically is replicate that in P5JS. I'm going to load in an image and then turn it into a triangle and then just repeat that triangle across the canvas. But I'm going to have to kind of flip it backwards and forwards so I get that reflection effect that I'm looking for. I've actually done some sketching of sort of what the overall layout of you know the, the triangles on my page is going to be. Basically, like when I tile them, I'm going to get this kind of honeycomb effect from the reflections. Um, but firstly, what I want to do is think about each in the individual base cell here that's going to be reflected. I need to kind of create that. And I did a little bit of maths and figured out that if the base of the cell is 100 pixels wide, then the height of the cell is going to be 100 times sine of 60, because it has a 60 degree uh, angle there. So I figured out the width and the height, and that's about 87 pixels. Uh, and I did a little bit of um, pre-work in my um, web editor. I've actually found a little image that I want to use um, as the background for my kaleidoscope, and I've resized this so it's 100 pixels wide and 87 pixels high, just using that formula. 100 times sine of 60. So when I run the sketch, um, I just see that image. The first thing I want to do is create this uh, a mask that lets me um, sort of chop off the images on the top left and top right of that um, square image or that rectangular image to make it a triangle. So I'm going to do that by creating a graphics object and I'm going to call it um, image mask. And in the setup function, I'm going to say image mask equals create graphics. And it's going to be the same width and height as my uh, pebble image. That's 100 pixels wide and 87 pixels high. If you were using a base image with a different width and a height, you just have to change those numbers. And if you want it to be an equilateral triangle, you might want to change the, what you put into that formula. So if it was 200 pixels wide, the height would be 200 times sine of 60. Um, so I create that graphics object, and then I'm going to just uh, draw a triangle into the middle of it. So um, if you think about it, if I switch back over to my uh, little drawing here, the three vertices of this triangle, if this is drawing into a little graphics object that is 87 high and 100 wide. The first vertex of the triangle is going to be at x equals 0, y equals height. The second one is going to be at x equals width over 2 and height equals 0. And the last one is going to be at width height. So if I create a shape just with those three vertices, I'm going to get um, a triangle as my mask. So I'm going to say image mask dot begin shape. Image mask dot end shape. And I'm going to turn off the stroke. And I'm going to create those three vertices. So image mask dot vertex. Uh, zero image mask dot height image mask dot vertex image mask dot width over two uh, zero and then image mask dot vertex mask
image mask width, image mask height. And then I'll uh, end the shape uh, and close it. So I need to put in close here. And then I'm just going to draw that to the um, canvas just to check that it's doing what I want it to. So image, image mask, and I'm going to draw that at uh, 120 across and 10 down. So there you can see the white triangle is the, is the triangle that I just drew into this image mask. And if you haven't sort of seen it before, the way that um, a graphics object works in P5.js is a bit like a little canvas of your own that you can um, uh, just draw into with all of the normal uh, graphics functions. Um, so I'll just bring up the reference page here. This is an example, so if I go to my reference, P5 graphics. So it's a P5 graphics object, and basically it's just an object that you can treat like an invisible canvas, like a layer that you can draw into however you like. Uh, so all of the normal drawing functions will work on the P5 graphics object, um, but you just have to remember to put the name of your, your object and then dot no stroke. So any of those drawing functions that you want to be done on that um, graphics object, you just put the name of the object first and then the dot. Okay, so now that we have that object, what I can actually do is set it as a mask on the image. So here I can say uh, pebbles dot mask image mask. And I'm going to draw the pebbles um, image again and so you can see the difference. And I'll turn off looping so that it doesn't, um, it only does it once. Then we can see the difference. So you can see uh, when I take that white triangle and use it as a mask on the pebbles image, it actually, anywhere that's transparent on the on the mask image, in this case the corners of that triangle, that, that gets masked out on the, on the final image. So we can actually use this now, we've got this, um, this little triangular sort of image that we can paste around on the page. So let's have a think about how we're going to need to reflect and rotate and translate this to get the effect of the kaleidoscope across the page. If I just switch back here, and go to this drawing, what I want to do is think about what are the reflections that I'm going to have on this, um, on these images. So like if I imagine that these corners are mirrors and say I had an image like that in the first um, case, in this one it's going to be reflected upside down like that, and in this one it's going to be reflected this way, and in this one it's going to be reflected, whoops, more like that. So I've got this quite complex um, reflection going on. So that's going to be a little bit tricky to figure out. It's going to be like that. Um, yeah, so what I should probably think about next is how can I uh, make this image do these reflections. So I think what I'll, what I'll do is end this video here and then I'll come back with a part two where we figure out how to actually reflect an image in all of those different orientations. I'll probably um, just improve the image that I'm using so it's a bit clearer how it's getting reflected. And in the next video, I'll just do those reflections. And then in the final one, we'll look at how we can tile them across the screen. Thanks for watching. And I hope you um, can use this to come up with some wonderful creative coding examples of your own. Bye.